Now at the end of telophase one, as you remember, we, had, we ended up with two cells. They separate off like this. And also there would be a centriole in each end from uh, where the meiotic spindles derived. So that's the end of telophase one. So we're now ready for the final stage. There's an interface after this. The cell goes into interface for a period of time. But it's important to note that in this interface, there's no more duplication of genetic material. There's no more duplication. So next the cell goes into prophase stage two. So here we have the, uh, here we have the cell. And I think we'll keep to our original color coding, but of course now we've got, we've got two cells. We've got two cells. And again, we'll just draw one tetrad. So we had a tetrad there like that. With this arm and that one there. Remember derived from the original homologous chromosomes. And that's now in that cell. And this one is now in this cell. Now let's just remind ourselves of where these came from, just before we move on. They came from this final stage in telophase one, where they divided. So 23 there, 23 there. Just drawn one, but in actual fact, you do know that there will be 23 of those and 23 of those. Now the centrioles duplicate so the duplication of the centriole. So there was one centriole in this cell at the end of the last stage, telophase one, and they duplicate and they go to the relative poles of the cell. So we end up with centrioles there and there. It's clever the way that the centrioles can divide and duplicate as well. And we start to form new meiotic spindles. Same material, this tubular protein material. And the chromosomes again condense. So the centrioles duplicate, the chromosomes condense, and again the nuclear envelope, I haven't drawn it here, but the nuclear envelope, which was present, remember the nuclear envelope was present, it redeveloped here at the end of telophase one. That nuclear envelope again is going to go. So that's uh, prophase two. Next we have metaphase two. Metaphase two. Now here again the tetrads line up in the equatorial plane of the cell. So there's 23 of them now isn't there in each cell they line up again so everything's nice and tidy. Those 23 pairs line up. And let's go back to the original single tetrad we were considering in each of the two cells because it's now haploid, remember. So here we have that one and that one. Like this, keeping to the same color coding. We have the tetrad there and on in this one. Like this. So we have those there. So the tetrads line up and the spindles become fully formed and connected. from the centrioles, like this. So this is one of the 23 that are lined up along the equatorial plane of the cell. They line up. Now the next stage is uh, anaphase two.
anaphase 2. Now in anaphase 2, the tetrads pull apart. They pull apart, though, so they finally pull apart. So what happens is they'll separate here, like that, and they'll separate there. So they finally pull apart. And again, we're dealing with two cells. And they finally are pulled apart by these uh, spindles, by these meiotic spindles. So finally, finally, these pull apart and become chromosomes in their own right in anaphase 2. It's taken a while to get to this stage, but finally here we are. So the tetrads now pull apart. They're pulled apart by these meiotic spindles. moving them in this direction, like this, the finally pulled apart, becoming chromosomes in their own right. So we're going to end up with 23 chromosomes in this half and 23 chromosomes in this half. 23 in this half, 23 in this half. And because of crossover from prophase one, each cell each gamete, this is a gametes, remember, sperm or ovum, will have a different genetic makeup. And then all that needs to happen after this is the final telophase, telophase 2. And the same thing happens as we, as we saw before. The If we just draw one, if we draw it small first of all, these going to separate this process of cytokinesis. They're going to separate. They're both going to separate. Centromere. Remember, this is derived from this one up here in anaphase two. So that's going to be like that. And this one. And this one, keeping the same color coding. So we now have four gametes genetically distinct from the parent cell. And of course these will fully separate, making completely individualized gametes. The nuclear envelope will reform. So that the chromosomes are again inside a separated nucleus. And there we have four gametes. Now in the case of men, this is gonna make four sperm. In females, only one of these survives. The others don't develop into ovum. But the key thing we need to notice is that there is genetic recombination and the number in each cell is N1, which is haploid. Twenty-three chromosomes in there, twenty-three chromosomes in there, in here and in here, all twenty-three chromosomes. So that's the 
second stage of meiosis, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, giving rise to the separate cells, which are now ready to combine with the equivalent gamete from the opposite sex to generate a new zygote, each gamete contributing 23 pairs of chromosomes giving rise to a new zygote with a complete set of 46 new genetically recombined chromosomes.